Welcome back to Sip the Salad Fam. I'm your host, Coach Evans. And today I'm going to bring you my preview for the 5 and 3 Baltimore Ravens versus the 5 and 3 Denver Broncos. Not a game that I think coming into we would have the same record. Um, kind of be jockeying for playoff position. Uh, especially with them having a rookie quarterback and, you know, all the things that have went on in Denver for the past year or two. But here we are, ladies and gentlemen. Both teams are five and three. Um, we're in a state of I don't know right now. Uh, they're building because, you know, they have a young quarterback. So anything positive for them, they're good. So them sitting at five and three is a, a big, big plus for them. Us sitting at five and three is more like a meh thing. But let's get into the um preview of the Baltimore Ravens versus the Denver Broncos. Welcome back to Sip the Tally Films. I'm your host, Coach Evan. Let's start. All right, welcome back. And so let's get this started by looking at how the teams stack up versus each other. Team offense versus team defense. I got a few stats here I'm going to read off. Um, team offense-wise, the Baltimore Ravens, we're number one. Have been number one for a while. Um, sitting at number one with 452 yards per game. Denver Broncos are 25th. Uh, they're 307.3 yards per game. Offensively, we're still the number one rushing team. 200 yards even even after you know what transpired in the last game we're still still sitting at 200 yards even so we're number one in team offense well rushing wise and they're 15th at 121.4 yards per game passing wise we're fifth 252 yards a game and they're 27th with 185.9 yards per game so offensively we're a class above them offensively on paper on paper uh, our average ranking so far is seven divided by three. That's two point something, and theirs is well into the twenties. At twenty five and fifteen, that's forty plus twenty seven. That's sixty seven divided by three. That's twenty three ish, twenty three ish total. So, um, offensively on paper, we have an advantage, but the offenses don't play against the offenses. Now let's look at the team defense. Team defense. We're 25th in the league, giving up 361 yards per game. Now, I will say this before I go on. Yards don't tell the whole story. If you get turnovers, um, you know, you, you get pick sixes, you know, different things go into how well your defense is, but yards is the main indicator. But yards don't ain't the end-all, be-all. You can be one of the middle-of-the-road team and giving up yards, but don't, don't give up scoring opportunities, and you get turnovers. You still can be a pretty good defense. Uh, yards wise, we're 25th with 363, 361.3 yards per game. They're third. They're third in, in team defense as far as yards giving up a game. 282.6. Uh, against the run, we're still number one. We only give up 69.9 yards per game. They're seventh versus the rush at 106.4. Sound like a radio station. 106.4. <laughs> um, pass wise. We are dead last again, 219.4 yards per game. They're fourth, 176.3. So it's, it's a tale of two offenses versus the run. We're good versus the pass. We're bad. And I, I think a bunch of factors go into that. Um, one, the obvious, our secondary on that back end has had some blunders. Two, the games we've won, we've been up fairly a lot and teams just forget to run and throw. So it's a combination of those two things to put us at 32, but if our whole secondary was playing up the par, we wouldn't be at 32. But I digress. Against the pass for them, they're fourth, and I might have already said that, 176.3. So defensive-wide, they, they stack. They're in the top 10 in all three. They're third in, in yards total. Seventh in rush, fourth in pass. The offense may be tested a little bit. Maybe tested a little bit. But we got new acquisition. On top of we already had yards wise the best offense. I think offensively we're gonna be straight. Against their defense. 
the X Factor came back to practice and probably is going to play. And the X Factor of all X Factors is Lamar Jackson. All right, let's get into some individual stats with the um, Denver Broncos. Obviously, they're being led by Bo Nix. He has uh, 1,530 yards, eight touchdowns, five interceptions so far. A rookie out of Oregon, drafted him, gave him the keys to the car. He's driving it right now, doing a good job of getting the ball out of his hands, something similar to what he did at Oregon. Also has one of his Oregon teammates on the team. That, that kind of helps, even though he's not the number one, but that still kind of helps with the the um, familiarity or whatnot. And um, I think I'm going I'm to give Peyton credit. He has the guy doing things similar to what he did in college, which makes him more comfortable. He's not going out there asking him to beat people, so to speak. Um, Just don't lose the game. Let's get the ball out your hand quick. You know, whatever playmakers you got, let them make the plays. And you just be an average quarterback until you grow into the game and get more comfortable with it. And we'll talk about that a little bit later when we talk about individual stuff. Um, Average time to th- throw is what stood out to me. He had, He's had three whole seconds to throw the ball, which alludes to something I'm going to talk about a little bit later with, with their O-line. So um, rushing leaders. Javante Williams, 345 yards and two touchdowns. But what stood out to me when I was looking at this is their second leading rush, and that's Bo Nix with 260 yards. So what that also is telling me is, is even when he gets past situations and he he's not comfortable with it, or you give him a lane, he's going to take off and run. So we can't, complete, can't completely forget about Bo Nix's athleticism when it comes to past situations, maybe – you know, third and medium, third and short, and they call a pass play. We can't forget about him, you know, actually running the ball. And Jamil, Glock, Jamil McLaughlin is the third leading rusher at right under 200 yards, 198. They're leading receivers, who some, you know, thought was a trade target, but, I mean, if you're five and three, why would you be in the seller's market, uh, honestly? So I don't, I don't see him moving much now with them being five and three, especially depending on the outcome of this game. It's Cortland Sutton, 29 catches, 232 yards. No, check that. Two, uh, 373 yards, 373 yards, and two touchdowns. Um, Sutton is like, the, he's their guy. He's the number one guy for them, 6'4", 216. Um, he's their big body receiver that a lot of teams covet, and he's kind of been – um. Bo's safe spot. You know, there was a couple games where they weren't on the same page and, you know, but everybody else got involved because they were taking Sutton out of the game, which is another compliment to Bo. He's just not forcing the ball to Sutton, even though he could. But um, Sutton is the guy you got to get your eyes on. Know where he's at. Uh, the offense, he's the best player in the offense. It's called a spade to spade. He's the best player in the offense. And you better know where he's at. And if not, you know, you forget about them or you you get in some favorable situations with some DBs that having problems, and we have plenty of those that's having problems. He might hurt you. He might hurt you. Um, Lil Jordan Humphreys, uh, Javante Williams there next lead. Well, Josh Williams is a second lead one, but um he has just under two hundred yards. I didn't really want to bring up Josh because I knew what happened to him, but I just I, he's still a second leading receiver. But let's let's keep going on. That's because I say, um, <clears throat> excuse me. Defensive wise, their leading tackler is Brandon Jones. Their second leading tackler is another DB, Riley Moss. Their fourth and fifth leading tacklers are all DBs, which is a red flag for me. As good as their defense is. That's one. Well, it don't necessarily have to be a red flag. It's one of two things. Um, runners are getting up on their DBs and their DBs are having to make tackles or their DBs are very aggressive and in being involved in the run game. One of the two. And. The, and the way it, it is happening, it could be good. It could be bad. If those DBs are super aggressive and they just the scheme puts them in the box and they're making tackles. Fine. If they're back at 10, 11, 12 yards and having to make tackles to save long runs, that's a different story. But the fact that they in their top five tacklers, there's one linebacker, Cody Barton. Cody Barton has 47. 
but the other four, 61, 50, 37, and 36, DBs. Interceptions, uh, we know what they got with one of the best corners in the league, Pat Sertan. He has three interceptions so far. Also with a TD, uh, that's a guy you don't really want to test too much. But let's look at um, how to, how we match up on paper versus these guys. Uh, the Ravens defense versus the Broncos offense. So what I did was I took the PFF score. And, and when you're looking at this chart, this chart has Marlette on the, the Baltimore side. I took Marlette out and used um, Wiggins score. So what I did was I added up each position. Like this one right here for Brandon Stevens says 81st. Um, oh, wait, 22nd. I took each position. Added it up, divided by 11, and that's my PFF ranking score for the defense. And for our defense, that came out to be a 36.5. Did the same thing for their offense. Uh, took Bailey out and put one of the other receivers in that actually had a score. That, and actually, I didn't try to cheat them. Whoever their be next, next best receiver was with the score, I added that in there. Added it in there. I can't remember who exactly it was, though. But um, And theirs came out to be 38.8. So on paper, just going by rankings, we should have the advantage defensively over them. Now, what I will say is, this is what I want to talk about earlier, their O-line is, is pretty good. When you look at PFF stuff, and, and green means, you know, for the most part, pretty good. This is the first time that I think I've seen the opposing team's offense be pretty much all, offensive line be pretty much all green. Looking at Boyles at left tackle, Ben Powers, who we know at left guard, Foresight, uh, Minerts at right guard, and uh, McGlinchley at right tackle. Um, if Travis is back with without the ankle issues, I think we should be straight him and Matt BK. But we got to get them edge guys. They got to get home some kind of way. They got to figure out a way. Owe, Van Oy, um, Ngakwe, uh, Tavis Robinson. Them guys got to find ways to get home and get Bo Nix uncomfortable. Because if you let him sit there and pick you apart, speaking of, and I just thought about this as I was saying it, if we come out with all that disguise and stuff and, and then dropping out and giving those guys free releases again, Bo Nix is going to eat us alive because he's trying to get the ball out quick anyway. It's best to get up on them guys and, you know, mix in your zone stuff. I'm not saying zone, don't stay zone. Don't play zone. But make them guys use their wherewithal to get off the ball and make them, make them work. Make them work, especially in third down. If, they, if they, they make a better play than you in third down, so be it. Let's go to the offensive side. Now, when you flip that metric and you look at the Ravens offense versus the uh, Broncos defense, this is what I came up with. The Broncos defense, their average is 26. They have 26. Their highest ranked guys, they got some some DBs that are really high, highly ranked. Or right, Sertan's 12th. Uh, they got a safety. Jones is 6th. Uh, they got another safety that's uh, highly ranked. Um, linebacker um, is seventh. They got they got some. They, they're straight, straight up front. So they came out with a total score of of twenty six. Whereas on the other hand, which I thought we had a significant advantage because we got two number ones and um Lamar Jackson and Derrick Henry, we came out twenty eight. Came out twenty eight. And we also have a fourth with uh, Tyler Linderbaum. Tyler Lindemann's fourth rated um center on PFL. So offense, our offense versus their defense should be the matchup to watch, you know, when we watch this game Sunday. But I just have this feeling that offensively we're gonna be on a different level right now. On a different level. And so um let's kind of get into the the tidbits of this and so we can wrap this on up, the insight, so to speak. And a few things that stood out that I actually saw. Um, Bo Nick scrambled at the highest seventh rate in the NFL this year at 19%, but has completed just nine of 25 attempts for 133 yards when doing so, recording a 36% completion percentage and a 14% completion percentage over expected, the fourth lowest in the NFL. Goes back to my point. You can't just sit him, let him sit there and pick you apart. You got to make him move. If he runs, so be it. Try to get him down. But him running and throwing has not been good, and that stat just says that. Uh, the next insight, Patrick Sertan has allowed seven receptions for 80 yards and one touchdown on 12 targets while in man coverage this season, recording a four-pass defender, including one interception. 
not Superman. Can't be beat. Can't be beat. And we have multiple route runners on the team now. And not to say Patrick Sertan is your, your who's the sucky player. Never saying that. But just know if you have to go at him, be careful in it. And he's human like everybody else. He could be beat. He could be beat. And especially depending on who they put him on. I don't think he's going to, to travel. And if he does travel with Zay, make Zay work out the slot and make him work through all that traffic. Make Zay work in the slot and make him work through all that traffic if he tries to travel with Zay. If he just stays on the outside, hey, do your thing with, with other guys. Um, One more. Well, we got two more. Zach Allen has recorded a league-high 13 run stuff this season with teammate Justin Sternard uh, close behind with 10, his fifth most. So, again, versus the run. They are ranked seventh versus the run. They're pretty tough, you know, versus it. Um, we're going to test that all early, I hope. They're going to test that all early and often. And I hope I, I hope outside zone, out of the pistol or shotgun, I'm sorry, out of the pistol or under center, makes its way back into our offense because they kind of disappeared last week for me. Then the last one we'll talk about, the Broncos defense. The Broncos have utilized a five-man front on 48 Point eight percent of defensive plays this season, the fourth highest rate in the season, generating a sixty-four point seven percent defensive success rate when doing so. The third highest in the NFL. They keen on stopping the run. That's they want to stop the run first uh, against the run. They're seventh again. That, that I'm telling you, the matchup to look up for our running game versus their run defense. That's that's the matchup to look up for. That's what's going to be the most exciting. And I really think we're going to prevail on it if we get execution. I was going to say creative, but we don't need to get creative. We execute. If we execute the blocks there, do what we need to do, get after it. Now, I will say there is the two guys that kind of bother me for them are Browning and Cooper. Young, fast, athletic. Now, I think, I think our guys can handle them. But it's when they loop inside and they go against the guards is what bothers me. I think if they just straight pass rush on Stanley and Rosengarten, they'll be good because, you know, Cooper, he's, you know, this strong, athletic dude. But I think Rosengarten can handle those guys. I think Rosengarten can't handle those stout, strong, just bull rush you guys. And I don't think Cooper's that. I don't think Browning's that either. So I think Ronnie and, and Rosengarten can handle that. But again, what's going to bother me is when they play games and Cooper and Brown and get on Farley and McCarty. That's what's going to bother me when they run stunts and stuff like that because I think their quickness may be too much for those two guys, if they, especially if they come clean. Especially if they come clean, but we'll see. One more last thing, and then we'll get you up out of here. The Broncos defense. This is Broncos defense versus, you know, or with respect to Lamar Jackson. Broncos have blitzed on a league high 43.4% of opposing dropbacks this season, generating a pressure rate of 42%. Uh, even without blitzing, the Broncos have generated the second highest pressure rate in the NFL, 37.8. So they're getting after the quarterback. They're getting after the quarterback. But in week eight versus the Browns, uh, the Rock Lamar was when he was blitzed. He was 8 for 11 with 97 yards and a touchdown when they blitzed him. So Lamar has been so much better versus the Blitz. And even though we lost last week, that continued last week. And they're going to Blitz, the Broncos. So we just have to continue to beat the Blitz and stop them from doing it. And that'll also open up the run game as well. This may be one of those situations where we have to pass a little bit to open up the run. Especially get them out there five-man front I just mentioned. But these are the numbers I have for you today. Um, I may be back with some film. Not going to promise you that. But definitely join for the watch party tomorrow. Call in show after the game. And we'll see what you know, if we get back on the winning track, man. I appreciate you guys for being here. You could have been anywhere in the world. But you chose to be here with me. And I predict we're going to win this game by a score of 33-21. That's my prediction. 33-21 Baltimore Ravens. We get back to scoring 30 and trying to hold them up under it. So that's all I got for you, man. Peace and love, and I'll see y'all soon.